Hello, I'm Brave Glass. Notably, I'm grinding to level 99 in Persona 4 Golden, exclusively inside of Yukiko's Castle. Because of that, I've had to get kinda creative with methods for making the process more efficient. So I've found myself partaking in some pretty strange side quests. Among those, defeating the God of Death using only a 5 iron golf club. So what's the deal with the Reaper in Persona 4 anyway? It's an optional endgame boss that drops the best equipment in the game, everyone's strongest weapons, best armor, and accessories that make you immune to almost all types of damage. So naturally, he's quite strong, but the rewards make him pretty worthwhile to fight, right? Well, for your average playthrough, I can't actually say it's worth bothering yourself over. By the time you're a high enough level to fight it, you could probably just beat the game anyway. And you can't take gear into New Game Plus, so you couldn't have much fun stomping either. My situation is a little different though. For the purposes of that aforementioned getting to level 99 all in Yukiko's Castle thing, I'm looking at the quickest ways to get levels in what should be the worst place to level up. And the Reaper has a base reward of 5000 EXP. I had actually done this max level first dungeon challenge before on very easy, and in that run, when I would intentionally let my teammates die, I was getting 15,000 experience per reaper fight. So even if I could only farm reapers during the last stretch of the challenge, it'd be a huge time save to have that boost every now and again, so it was practically a necessity in my eyes. At the time, at least. Before fighting the Reaper though, most players recommend being somewhere around level 75 and level 80, which meant plenty of time to grind, and plenty of time to strategize. Should we take it to a vote? Inmate or Joe Rogan? That's a good... Dead is not a verb. That's a... Do you guys know what... What did this stream become? I just wanted to play Mad Libs. I thought it was gonna be like... One minute, and then we're out. <laughs> now, the process of grinding experience certainly isn't an impressive thing. The only thing it tests is patience, and although that may be worth considering a skill in and of itself, anyone could beat the Reaper with a 5-iron as long as they were high enough level. So, approaching the normal recommended level, I thought it'd be nice to formulate some kind of strategy to give us a little more edge than just patience. The Reaper has a pretty annoying toolkit, as you might expect from any given optional endgame boss in any given JRPG. He'll cast AoE skills of any element, including the light and dark instant kills. He'll break your resistances if you have them, and by far and away the worst thing he can do to you is cast almighty skills. Skills that you can't repel, and that could kill you at any moment. Not to mention he takes two turns every turn. Me on the other hand? The only time I've had to upgrade my gear was one trip out of Yukiko's castle while grinding for a victory cry Kaimon. Because of the materials from Yukiko's castle I had, I was able to buy some additional weapons and armor. None of them really making a significant difference in the face of the Megi Man, but I did get a 5 iron golf club. Technically I also had access to an EI katana which did like 7 more damage, but listen to the sound a golf club makes when you hit someone. <laughs> Hilarious, right? As far as personas go, in my last video I posed the idea of White Rider for Diorama, but eh, Diorama? We all know that's lame. Everyone here knows that, we could definitely figure out something better than mid-healing. And the idea that stood out to Chat and I the most was abusing critical hits to keep the Reaper down. Just pick a persona with a decent damage and high crit chance move, slap a rebellion skill card on it, and then hopefully we'd be able to start taking our own double turns. Enter Michael. Persona with a promising kit for getting full resistances, and the unique skill Heaven's Blade, which boasts a 30% crit chance, among the highest in the game. Besides, who better to rid the world of death than the leader of an angel army that went toe-to-toe -to -toe with the devil himself? Yeah, so that didn't work. But, I did learn some interesting things. One of the other personas I had fused while preparing was Sibel. She had resistances to most things, no weaknesses at least. I didn't want to use her very much, but she also had healing skills and revive skills. So at some point I just felt like trying to get a power charged God's Hand from Chie instead of going for rebel crits on Michael. But the real star of her kit was Ollie Dance, a passive move that halves the opponent's hit rate on the user. Which is weird because Angelic Grace, a higher ranked skill, does the same
same thing, but worse, just a strange aside. But with the essential doubling of our evasion, Subel at least was having a notably easier time dealing with our real opponent in these fights, the Maggie skills making it clear to me that our best bet was to try and juice up our evasion as much as possible to make up for our lack of gear. And doing that required Ollie Dance on a new persona. Didn't really matter which persona I brought on, as long as they were a high level so it wouldn't take as long to max their stats with shuffle time cards. The persona who I could most easily make invincible ended up being the one I used in my last run, Ara Hibaki. After a bit of fusing and one Tsukukaja skill card later, all I had to do was at least get his agility maxed out. Eventually I accomplished this off game. While grinding for our Abaki stats, we had actually gotten to a higher level than our initial goal level. But one thing still remained to be decided. How are we going to get damage? One of my chatters, a bit of a celebrity around these parts, suggested forgetting about reviving Chie and Yosuke since it takes quite a bit of luck to get them to live long enough to do damage. Instead, just straight up basic attack. Heal when I'm low, and keep Tsukukaja up. But surely not, right? Yosuke's probably dead here. Yeah, and she is probably dead here. <laughs> That's what I got. Now it's all up to your boy. We got Suku for another turn, and let's just uh, get into it, I guess. <laughs> That's what I got. Vicious Strike is heavy damage. Oh wait, I think he kills himself here. There it is. <laughs> That's what I got. Well, I was expecting that to be uh, a lot longer. <laughs> That's what I got. I will never doubt this chatter again. So, we had finally done it, killing the reaper with a 5 iron. With this, I would be able to get large jumps ahead in experience, is what I would say if I wasn't an idiot. It had somehow slipped my mind this whole time that the EXP penalty on very hard would affect the rewards for defeating the reaper. Instead of that 15,000 experience I received in the very easy run of this challenge, it gives me 666 experience. Cute, right? Anyway, the Reaper being not even that much better than three wealth hands was discouraging to say the least, but not deterring. Getting ultimate weapons to instant kill most encounters shaves off genuinely quite a bit of time on the grind, so even if this was sort of a bust, any little bit counts, and nothing will stop me from seeing the end of this. Oh, whoops, looks like something stopped me from seeing the end of this for a while there. Hello viewer at the end of the video, I just want to remind you to consider subscribing you can press the bell icon to be notified whenever I upload or go live right here on this channel. There was a bit of a pause in the challenge while I was trying to figure out how to make this video. I haven't made many videos after all, so it's kind of a process. But now there should be nothing in the way really. So if you stick around, maybe you'll be there for when we cross the finish line. At any rate, thanks for watching.